Um, but some of y'all need to hear this. Some of y'all need to hear this. <laughs> I see on other people's videos and comments, even in our comments sometimes. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel. I'm Cassie with Walker Farm Fam and I'm out doing chores and it is cold. Took the kids to school. Um, a cup, oh no. Ransom left a good toy that Hank is about to chew up. Hank, leave it. He would be so sad, even though it would be completely his fault, but he is in love with Buzz Lightyear right now. I don't know if you can see that, but these are his Buzz Lightyear wings. And Hank was about to start destroying them because that's kind of what he does as a puppy. What was I saying? I think I was saying I just dropped the kids off at school and my car said it was 27 degrees. So that's pretty cold. Twice a week, I don't go into work until the, towards the end of the day uh, teaching. So I have some time to spend on the farm and stuff like that. So out checking the animals, my hands are about to freeze off. Should have brought out some gloves. Probably won't video much out here, but I already fed and watered the rabbits, the quail, and the little chicks, chickens, um, and they're doing great. Gave them fresh water, broke what was um, frozen, fed them, doing good. We're expecting baby kits uh, anytime um, from our mama rabbits, but they should have had them a day or two ago. Sometimes they're a little late, so I don't know what's going on. Maybe maybe they weren't pregnant so we'll go from there sometimes that happens i'm gonna bust the ice here for the big chickens check for eggs and then i'm gonna head inside i know can you give me a second then i'm gonna head inside and you guys know i got the incubator going and if you saw the video on that it's in my pantry so we're going to go in there check out the eggs show you what the next step is and then we'll see what else we can get ourselves into so let's go so this is a uh, extra corner post for this Premier One fence. We didn't really need, the, need them this time. Um, and so they've been stuck in the ground here. So I use one on cold mornings to bust the chicken water. <laughs> so it works out. I don't have to uh, go all the way in there. I can just bust it and they can drink. So chickens are doing good. We got Carter, the rose comb black rose comb banding rooster and that's actually what i'm trying to hatch some more um rose comb bannies out and we got no name over there rooster i'm gonna have to find a name for him and his little lady friend that i hatched out and then all the rest here are from chad and case and adler over at adler farms and they are getting so big chicken coops doing awesome premier one fence awesome we love it our uh automatic chicken coop door right here is from chicken guard and it has been absolutely amazing goes up and down without us doing anything but the coolest feature about chicken guard is once it goes down it automatically locks as well there's no getting it up stays locked keeps your chicken safe it is about that time of year when people start thinking about spring and summer chicken and stuff. So if you're so. looking for an automatic chicken door, Chicken Guard is the way to go. Down in our description, we have an affiliate link. Um, go check it out. You, this is the Chicken Guard Extreme package. They have different bundles. You can just buy the door. You can just buy the little um, timer that makes it go up and down. You can make your own door. There's different ways to do it. So go check it out and uh, see what works for you. Has not failed us the batteries have went dead once but we just had to put new batteries in other than that it goes up and down as it's supposed to always works so as we've told you before we all pull our own weight around here i take care of the quail and the chickens gary takes care of the cows ranger and the kids take care of the rabbits but if at any point anyone needs help someone's busy someone's not here whatever the case then we do chores for each other so ranger will feed the rabbits when he gets home it's not raining it's just uh let's see melting and dripping off the roof 
So Ranger will feed his rabbits when he get, gets home, but I made sure everything had water since it was frozen. So everyone pulls their own weight, but we also help each other out. So let's check the fire and let's head on inside. So I can hear it blowing inside. Let's see. Got a good amount of wood on it. Open it up for a little bit. I might move some of those coals out. It's got to be able to breathe underneath and it's packed in there pretty good. So it's looking good though. It's been keeping us warm. We haven't had our central heat and air kick on in a very long time. So as I told you, I'm inside my pantry. So it's a little bit of a hot mess in here. Not gonna take time to clean it. It is what it is. You see all the things. Ransom has to drink Pediasure, prescribed by the doctor, so he'll grow. But guess what? Oh, the fireplace just kicked on. But guess what? He wore high water pants. If you don't know what that is, it's when your pants are higher than like your shoe. So, they call them high water pants. For the first time the other day because his legs are getting so long. So, we're getting somewhere. <laughs> anyway, I'm inside my pantry. Um... I told you guys that a subscriber, Ray, sent us some eggs. Um, I don't know. It's, I guess it's been about a week. Um, and I put those in the incubator a few videos back. Ranger's friend, Buckshot, he has a other, another name, but he goes by Buckshot, um, gave us some of the rose comb banty eggs. I can tell them easily apart because the banty eggs are about that big. And the other ones are like a regular size chicken. So... The banny eggs have been in a little bit longer than the other eggs. Um, it is time for the banny eggs to go on lockdown. What does lockdown mean? Somebody asked me that. I have a much more in-depth video of this um, Hatchmate by Backyard Farms. I'll put an iCard up here and you can go check that out because I'm not going to go over every little single detail. Um, but what that means is lockdown is when you close it and you don't. Um, rotate them anymore. So if you have them in the automatic turners, take them out of the automatic turners. If you've been rotating them by hand like I have been, you stop doing that. But I have eggs at different stages. The big chicken eggs sent by Ray aren't ready for lockdown. I'm still going to have to be turning them. This Hatchmate by Backyard Farms is awesome. I love it. I've only hatched eggs one time other than this. But I put in nine and eight hatched and the one that didn't was a double yoker. So if I can do it, Anybody can do it. Gary says if a chicken can do it, anybody can do it. The chicken don't have, um, don't know what the humidity and the temperature is. The chicken doesn't know how many times have I turned those eggs today, but she still gets it done. So, um, why am I turning these by hand? Because I had more in here than what the turner can hold. Um, this incubator doesn't hold very many eggs. I knew that going in. I don't want a huge one that holds a ton of eggs. I just wanted something small that I can manage and we can have some fun with. When we get too many eggs, I shouldn't say too many because that's not a negative thing. If we have more than this can hold, I turned it by hand this time. Backyard farm might be saying, no, don't do that, Cassie. But I'm experimenting. I want to let people know if it works or not. I try to turn them three times a day. As anything else, look it up. Ten people will tell you 25 different answers. Um, I've done a ton of research on incubating. I've watched a lot of our friends here on YouTube do it, and I've watched other ones. Um, all you got to do is research, figure it out, and you can do it. If you don't research, you're not going to probably do it right. This um, incubator came with an instruction manual, and it step-by-step -step tells you what to do. There's even a chart that tells you what to do. What should the humidity be? What should the temperature be? People will tell you a thousand different things. I did what the instruction booklet said. Boom. We got baby chicks. So let's uh, take a look inside. This is to candle the egg. First time, I just used it like this. This was in there and I had no clue what it was. And Hatchmate emailed me, emailed me and said, Cassie, put that on the flashlight and you can see inside the egg better. Boing. All right. So like I said, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm doing what they and my friends tell me to do and it's working for us. So kindling the eggs, we'll make it dark in here, put the egg on top and you'll be able to see a difference in those that are fertile and have something growing and those that aren't. Just because someone sends you 12 fertile eggs doesn't mean you're going to have 12 hatch. Not all of them uh, turn out. Why? I don't really know. Um, there's probably a YouTube video about that. But it, it happens. So we'll see. 
turn off the light. We'll candle. I have candled the Banny eggs already because you candle between day seven and nine and you put on lockdown on day 17, 18. Again, depends on who you ask. Um, and when I candled the Banny eggs, all four of them looked good. I also candled the eggs from Ray the other day just to kind of have an idea because it's hard not to. And we have some who aren't looking so well, but I left them in, giving them a few more days. Today is day eight, I believe, or nine on, let's just call them the Ray eggs. And we'll look and see. If they're not forming, I'm not going to leave them in here because if one busts, they say it stinks. Also, it's taking up room that we could use um, for the other eggs. So, let's get to it. I know I've said that a thousand times. That's probably kind of a weird angle, but it's about the best I can do. So, I've got you propped up. If you fall, I'm sorry. So, we're going to open this up. This is how I've been doing it. They have an O on one side. And yes, I did it with a pencil. For those of you that commented and said, I better do it with a pencil. And an X on the other side. So that way I know, all right, they're on the O side. I need to turn them to the X side. So that's what I've been doing. Let's take out the four Banny eggs and let's candle them. You don't want to leave this open very long. Some people freak out if you leave it open longer than five seconds. But guess what? Most hens get up and poop or get a bite to eat or get something to drink. And they stay off their eggs for a little bit. And they still hatch. So let's turn off the light. These might be a little hard to see because they're so small. But you definitely can't see through them. Here's the bottom of the flashlight. The top of the eggs way up here. And I can't see anything. Okay. So that means there's something inside because they're not just see-through. See that bubble right there? I see veins and there's a little air pocket. So something is definitely forming. Here's the next one. It's Some people are good at this, I'm not. But see that little air pocket, then it gets dark and you can see some red veins. Okay, so we got something growing in that one also. Sometimes they say you can even see the chicken moving around. So again, you can't see completely through the egg. If this wasn't fertile, if nothing was growing, you'd just be able to see completely through it. It would all look like that on the bottom. But there's veins and it's dark. And I can even see feathers on this one, but I don't know if you guys can see it, but I can see them. I would say we're gonna have us four banny chickens, okay? I'm gonna examine, make sure there's no cracks or anything. Make sure we're all good. Excuse my dirty hands when I worked on the wood stove. They got kind of gross. I don't know what is on that. A little piece of something. So you do not wash your eggs before you put them in the incubator. You'll notice some have poop and stuff on them because I just left it on there. I did not wash it. Eggs have a protective layer naturally from their mama. And if you wash it off, no bueno. When we collect our eggs, we don't wash them before we eat them. We keep the eggs out on the counter. We don't wash them and um, they stay for a while. If you wash an egg, you have to refrigerate it. So they say. All right, so let's put these back in. These are the ones that are going to be on lockdown. So I'm going to put these banny eggs on this side. Okay, so see how you can see all the way through that egg. Actually, there's a vein now. Nope, that was the X. See how you can see all the way through that egg? This is day eight or nine. If it's a fertile egg, you should not be able to see all the way through it and you should be able to see veins. But you notice how the banny eggs, they were white and you couldn't see through them, they were dark. That's because it had a chicken in it and you can't see through it. These don't have a chicken in them. Another egg. You can see right through it. This egg's really big. I wouldn't be surprised if it's not a double yoker. And I don't see any veins. I'll show you some that are in the same stage as them and how different they look. No veins. That black thing floating around is the yolk because they all have a yolk in them. 
but by this point you should be seeing veins and the color should be a little different showing that there's a chicken forming and that happens that's, that's why you order 12 or 15 eggs because it's going to happen um, I believe they sent us uh, 13 or 14 eggs and if five aren't forming then that's probably about where we're at you can see all the way through it I see zero f veins forming indicating that there's some life forming in there this is why we candle our eggs so we can take out whatever is not doing anything all right we're going to keep those over to the side for now we're going to get out the others that are the, in the same stage and see if there's a difference there should be so while i take all these out that are in the same stage and i'm pretty sure are fertile i'm also going to take out these banny eggs because i'm going to take out this top tray when you first put them in you put them on this top tray as well but when it comes time for lockdown, you take out this bottom tray. I'm going to add a little bit of water. You take out that top tray. You put the eggs down here, and they have a lot more room, headroom, once they hatch. So we'll put them over here for now, and then I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with the egg turner. This is the egg turner, and this is how I'm going to separate the eggs. Usually you put dividers in here, but I'm going to put two on each side, and that's where they're going to hatch out, okay? And then I'm going to put the rest in here that I'm going to be turning. That way when these hatch out, if you've, if you've ever seen eggs hatch out, they start going crazy. That way they don't knock the other ones all around and end up busting them or something, okay? I don't know if this will work. Some of you is probably screaming for me not to do this, but we're going to try it. The only way to learn is to try things. And you all always tell me I say this wrong. I'm sorry, I'm not good at English. Hydrometer. I think that's how you say it. And I think I always say hydrometer. I don't know. I see it in my head and I say it. I think it's called a hyd hydrometer. <laughs> Whatever this doohickey is that tells you the temperature and the humidity and we have it in celsius okay i don't know if you can see this but you can see through it like the others but there are veins in here and there's more things growing it's not just a yolk floating around you can see that stuff is forming i can see veins I don't know though, this has like a really red bloody spot, but that's probably just cause it's forming. I'm not real sure. Just remember, this is only my second time. But we're gonna keep that egg as a keeper because it's not just a yolk floating around. All right, this is what we're looking for. So maybe that one is bad. See this? Super dark on that side, a little bit of light. See the vein? I'm, I'm talking like cause I'm getting excited this is what you should be seeing i see a chicken on that side it's all dark 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 spin it around little bit of light look at the veins those are veins if you didn't know flip it over same thing lots of veins back here it's not picking it up veins over here and a super dark chicken forming i'm gonna say the one with the blood spot probably isn't any good again big chicken on the side forming veins can't see all the way through it chicken in that one yep same thing see a chicken forming i'm doing this kind of fast because i want to put them back in i don't want to bore y'all you can but, see well yep okay there's something forming but you can definitely see a difference this one you can see through but there is a black chicken forming right there oh i don't know that the chicken's black but there's a black spot Okay, that's the difference. Don't be yelling at me, y'all. It's working. And last one. Good air bubble at the bottom. Chicken is for me. So this is the one that I'm telling you guys, I don't, I don't think it's doing so well. I'm going to leave it in here a couple more days, though. See what happens. 
Okay, so that's what we're going to do. Let's put them all back in. I did put a little more water. Put my, whatchamacallit, I'm not going to say it again, in here. Was everybody on an X or was everybody on an O? I can't remember. Let's turn everybody to X's and I'll turn them again later. This is what I think is an AM Samani. It's more pinkish color when you compare it to a brown egg. See how it's more pink? I think that's the only AM Samani we got. It better not be a rooster. Benny eggs are right here on the side. They're now on lockdown. Let's put them both on O. Put these on O. And I will not be moving them anymore. They should hatch in about three days. Other ones are on X's. I got seven in here. Let's close it back up. For reference, I'll show you one of these eggs that isn't doing anything one more time. Okay, you can see all the way through and there's no dark spot other than that tiny part anywhere. And that's just because that's the yolk. That would be on any egg. Okay, so that's the difference. So it is always a bummer when some of the eggs just don't turn out. I was so excited when I put nine in and eight hatched and only the one that didn't was a double yoker. Um, I don't know what other people do, but if I decide to take an egg out because it's not forming, I crack it open. I want to see what it looks like so I can learn. Cassie, you thought that there wasn't anything in there, you, you cracked it open and there was. Or you thought nothing was in there, you cracked it open and you were right. That way I know what to keep looking for and I don't have to just guess, okay? Um, I could just keep all these in here for the days that are left, but there's no point if nothing is forming. So I take them out. So I cracked those eggs open and I was right. Nothing was forming. Uh, that big egg was a double yoker. So um, I feel like I'm learning as I go, trial and error. Um, but some of y'all need to hear this. Some of y'all need to hear this. <laughs> I see on other people's videos and comments, even in our comments sometimes, that is not how you do that. Do you not know what you're doing? Yeah, sometimes I watch people video and they have no clue what they're doing and they're doing it completely wrong. But guess what? Hopefully they'll learn and they'll do better next time. But also, whatever you're raising, kids, <laughs> chickens, cows, pigs, goats, whatever, there's a million ways to do things. Pick the method, pick the way that is best for you and works for you and try it. If it doesn't work, be willing to say, eh, I was wrong and try something else. Those of you that would like to tell everybody that you're doing it completely wrong, you don't know what you're doing, you can offer advice. That's great. People offer us advice in our comments all the time, nicely. We try it sometimes and it was better. It worked better or it didn't work or we don't try it because we don't want to. But there's a million ways to do things. When I was going to turn these by hand, I started researching it. One person said I had to turn them 10 times a day. I ain't got time to turn chickens ten times, chicken eggs 10 times a day. Are you crazy? I've been doing it three times a day, but guess what? There's days that I've only done it once or twice because we were busy or I forgot. Also, there's been days I go in there, the humidity's at 20 or 30. It just dropped overnight. I build it back up. There's days I go in there, yada, yada. But it's an egg. Chickens, hens do this all the time. <laughs> and they don't have any special gadgets to tell them what to do. They just do it. So don't be scared of all the rules. If you're new to homesteading or you're wanting to start homesteading, farming, don't be scared. Go try it. Research it. You guys keep telling me I need to check out Mary Carl over at Cog Hill Farm. Guess what? I watch her. She's good. She knows what she's doing. I've taken some advice from, what is she, 10? From a 10 year old. Okay. So do what is best for you do what is best for your farm what kind of pig should i get what kind of chicken should i get what kind of yada yada get what you can afford there's lots of fancy rare you got to eat this because it tastes the best out there but what can you afford start with what you can afford start with what you can manage and build from there so 
I'm going to leave you guys with me and the boys doing something fun the other day. I hope you have a great, great day. Hope you have an amazing weekend. And I hope whatever it is that you want to do, that you want to start, I hope that you'll go and do it. You'll try your hardest. And if it doesn't work out, you'll try something else. Love you all. We appreciate you. The boys are wanting to shoot their guns this morning. So we're headed out to where we've kind of set up a safe spot to shoot on the farm. So they want to show you what they've been doing. So this is what I got for Christmas. And I've been practicing some. And we're out here to shoot it again. And Ransom's going to shoot his BB gun. You want to show them your ammo box? Where'd you get that? So, if you haven't... Careful, careful. <laughs> go check out our video where we, um, I sold a rabbit and we traded out some. Won't give you too many hints, but go check it out if you haven't already. So you traded a rabbit for all this? Yeah. And I got three shirts. And three shirts? From someone. Who was it? You guys have to go check out the video. Woo! I heard it! Good job, buddy. You want to go see where you hit it? Yeah. So, their Nana got them this new target and it boom, and they hit it and it swings back and forth pretty cool like a dumbbell <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> so it has uh decals you can put on them as well and then when it gets all messed up we'll just spray paint it back white or black or something every time the other side's what you had been shooting right yeah see what it looks like and it had a deer decal on it, but he uh, shot it to pieces. Is that pretty fun? Yeah. Good spot. So tell us why you like that turquoise gun. Because it's a cover of our school. It's our school colors. It's pretty it's cool, isn't it? Color. Yep, I like it. All right, Ransom, are you next? Yep. Hey, tell us, tell us about that hoodie you're wearing. I'm a farm fam, and I'm ready to shoot this gun. Yeah, you like your new hoodie? Mm -hmm. So I got a new hoodie also. Um, if you guys haven't went and checked out Pure Living for Outdoors, Taylor over there, he does all things hunting and fishing and really cool videos. His wife uh, made these for us, and we've got some other things um, on the works that hopefully we'll be able to offer to you guys um, on our website and our merch so we'll let you know when other things are available make sure you go check out pure living for outdoors and tell them walker farm fam sent you all right ran man let's see that long rifle Woo! good job you can go see if you hit it ransom shooting a bb gun did you get it uh, no. nope yeah you did think you hit it right here think you hit, made that big mark. oh i don't know i don't do that again all right just like that can I, can I we might have to get you a shot off sawed off bb gun <laughs> so it won't be so long you like it mm -hmm. papa get you that for christmas yep. look at those boots is that how you cock it so you don't get dirt up in it that gun's bigger than you pull it <laughs> Pull it down. Push it down. Is it enough? I think so. Now push it down. Oh, there it goes. All right, now come back and aim. Uh, nope, too close. If it hits it, it'll come back at you. Right here. All right, ready? Mm -hmm. Make, sure I get it good aim. Make sure you get a good aim. All right, let's go see where all we've hit. So I was telling Ranger, if he can get to where he can hit it on anywhere on this circle, he'll have a dead deer when she starts using a deer rifle. But for squirrel hunting, we're gonna be need to be zeroed in, zeroed in a little more, but he's doing awesome. 
Because this is the squirrel's body. It might hit his head. <laughs> Be a big old squirrel. <laughs> All right. What do you guys want to tell them? Give a thumbs up. Hit bell, check it. Subscribe and God bless. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that bell notification. Like this video. And if your kids have one of these, then comment down below. Peace. Woo!